G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel where I like to teach you guys how to paint in acrylic. I just want to get the size of my canvas going and also the colours running up the screen that I choose to use in this tutorial. All right, so this is going to be a portrait, seascape, water, sky, bit of foreground. Beautiful subjects for a piece of art to hang on your wall. So let's get into it. So just to explain to you fellas out here, I've got my horizon line above halfway and I've got one, two, three lines there just to break up the water. So it's gonna look like we've got the outside deep water coming to the shallow water, coming to the white agitated wash onto the sand. It's gonna be a simple but effective painting and I hope I can get a lot of realism in this and I want some beautiful cumulus clouds up in the sky. Up to you how you do the skies. I'm gonna do my sky. Now if you wanna copy my sky, go for it. But if you have an, your own sky that you like to do, put your sky into it, all right? Now I've got me putter on a brush because that's gonna put that paint on. And I've got some soft bodied titanium white out of a large bottle from the art shop. It's like craft paint, poster paint, student paint. Student paint. Now I'm gonna put some retarder into that and it'll keep it wet for a long time so I can blend my sky. And this is pretty much an acrylic recipe for the magic white that the oil artists use. So I'm mixing that together with my big putter on a brush and I'm gonna slap it on the canvas for the footprint of the sky. Okay, so we'll get this pushed on any old way just to my sky area there. I can go a little bit below, but I know where my sky area finishes. Because I'm painting a section at a time. I don't want to be racing against the clock. Now that I've got that on, it's quite thick and blobby. I want to come to the tip of this brush and just simply stroke that left and right so it's nice, thin, even surface ready to put our colours on there. Now down here next to me coffee, I've got the cerulean blue and I've got a grey from the tube. If you don't have tubed grey, just mix up your own variants of grey. And I want to get the... Cerulean blue and I want to make a realistic sky color. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top and bring it down You don't want it this blue on your sky because it's going to look a bit too cartoony And I'll start at the top. I'll push it right in. See it's very dull already and now I'll bring it down to the bottom Crisscross it crisscross it get it everywhere because we're going to stroke it left and right in a minute Crisscross it to the edges so you're happy now I'm coming to the tip of the brush and the bottom of that, you can see, is a lot lighter than the top. Beautiful. Okay, I want to get with the rest of me blue now. I want to get a little bit of magenta and mix up a dark shadow colour. Now I'm going to get these two colours going. Over here, there we go. Let's see what happens if we put a bit of grey in it. Should I or shouldn't I put grey with it? No, I don't think so. Oh yeah, I could do. All right, let's just get that bit over there. Now, once again, I haven't painted this painting before, so this is the first time I'm painting it. Now, this is, let's say, what I'm doing here right now is pretty much an advanced moment. If you're a very first time beginner, you don't have to do this. You can just leave your clouds simple for this moment. You don't want to technicalize yourself too early in your journey. So there's my shadow color for me clouds. Now, I've got just a filbert brush here. It's only a small painting, so I don't need a big fan brush. You can use pretty much any brush to stamp on your cloud and kind of sit it into the sky color. And I'm looking at my clouds. I, don't, I just want them about here, but I want to work on the stuff behind and then bring the focus stuff in front. So I want to get, I can just dance here because I know this is all going to be behind and I want to kind of get this cloud puffy so watch what this filbert brush does. I'll bring all this down like that just for now. Pick up some more, but be careful not to contaminate it. And I just want bits of this. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my kitchen cloth. Always have a kitchen cloth when you're doing clouds. See, I've just got a kitchen cloth here. I'm gonna just wipe that and pretend, I can pretend this is a little blending brush. You want it quite dry. Let's see if this is gonna work or do I need my blending brush. And I just wanna whisper the edge of this stuff just into that blue, very whispery, controlling it. It doesn't need yumminess. This is just going to be the background and it just adds that flavour of goodness to your painting. So there we go. Let's go about here. This is going to sit behind my cumulus so you'll see. 
Did you see the picture in the opening credits? Give you an idea of what's going on in my mind. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna wipe that putter on a brush again, the one I put the, that cloud on. And I wanna sit this into the soft sky as well. There we go. Now this is something different. I haven't done this before, so I'm giving it a first time go here. That sky is very wet, so I'm touching it very lightly, very lightly, and also wiping the build up as I go. Now what I'm gonna do is grab some of this stuff that I mixed on both sides of my brush, because you need this on there to get the sky dimensional. Start over here first. So I wanna, where are we? I wanna stamp this on, just like so, just there. Uh, probably a bit coming down here. Watch what I do here. Stamp that on there, and I don't know, maybe some bits there. So I've, I've stamped it on, there we go. Stamped it on. Could just gingerly pull the bottoms like this. Is my camera on? Yes. Gingerly pull it like that. There we go. It's just sitting there softly. Now I've gone to a fan brush. I prefer my fan brush. I'm going to load that up and chisel it. And I've also got another blending brush to blend these front clouds in. So I want to get right on top. See this dull stuff? And I've got this shadow here. I'm going to create something around that, but on the same motion, bringing little bits into that gray, but not contaminating too much of my white paint as I do it. So I'm just twisting that on, bringing some into there. Now, oopsie, I'd easy. I've gone into there, which is great. This is a lot thicker because I want the edge of this darker than that first bit that I just put on. So I'm just going to do this in between get bits and bobs of it all up there and in the middle. I don't want to destroy too much of that shadow color. Now that looks a bit weird, iffity, effity. That's fine, that's how clouds happen. Now we get our blending brush and I want to grab the corner of it, which say here, and I want to just start controlling now the top of this cloud very lightly, very lightly, watching what's happening. I've got to wipe it because I want to pull some of that into the gray find your pressure you might have to push a bit heavier in places see how it's going for you now we're getting up there pulling it down it's mixing with that gray it's going quite good i'm happy with that you'd want to be happy with that because that looks pretty awesome that cloud thanks little buddy we're going to put stuff at the bottom as well but we don't want all these just capped with white tops we want to try and make it look nature fireable so i'm making sure my sky color hasn't dried on me before I get too far going. Otherwise, you'll be thinking it's so hard to do. It's going all crazy and clammy. So you've got a window to do things with acrylic. Understanding that is part of the key as well. And we're just gonna make some kind of wishy-washy cloud moments there. We can put more shadow in there if we need to. Okay, now I've got some more. I wanna come down here. So I'm coming down in front of this now, down in front of that, pushing that back, bringing this. I'm not bringing it all the way to the bottom, otherwise I'm gonna lose clarity where I can get dimension within this cloud. This is gonna be blended down to the bottom. I want something here as well, blending down to the bottom. I'll do just that much so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves, And blend this down, and it's gonna create darkness and brightness as well within it all. Let's get this around there, wipe it. See how that's all white and strong? I need, let me just put a little bit there if I can, just a bit of that stuff. That that's it, that's all you need to do. And then that's going to blend with the white of that. So if anything, I'm pushing that white onto that gray I just put there. Just so it's not a full gray, I mean a full white cloud. And you can see just what I've achieved there. We're kind of sitting all that other stuff back, coming up above and bringing that down to the horizon. Here, a nice billowy bit in front of there, billowing around, leaving open bits within it, coming off there. Okay, that'll do. Same thing again. Get this blended 
in and around. If you need to add more of that purpley shadow colour, by all means, stop and add it in. Now, it's starting to look sectional at the moment, but it's nowhere near finished, okay? So bear through this moment until we get it sorted. I just want to get maybe rid of some of this sectional bit there. There we go. Now I'm going to look at my monitor and just see where and how it's all faring. Yeah, we need a bit of yumminess. It's going good. I'm just looking here. I want to get rid of some of that unnatural vibe of that there. So it looks more natural. Now I'm just looking. I'm picking up some of the grey colour because I do want bits more of it kind of rubbed in. I'm just. You can use your brush. I'm just using my finger because a lot of this will be washed away with white as well. But I'm, I need some of it there to create the depth Okay, so there, there, it's all mixing with that grey. That bit where I said it looks sectional, I'm going to, you know, distort that now because I had time to find what I didn't like and change it to what I want it to look like. There we go. Now I want to get this blended right down to the horizon line where it's going to meet the water. And then we can just add some yumminess. Look at it, look at it through a camera viewfinder and work out where some yumminess can be inherited. Now just to be different with the yumminess, I want to pull the paint over I'm going to use. And I've got a little bit of cadmium yellow here. Just I think it's medium yet. And I want the slightest bit tainting this white. And this just adds some beautiful sunlight on the tips of your clouds. I've done this before and I quite like the way it looks. I like the vibe that it gives it. So I want to get this and just get the tops like this where I feel, I don't know, there's light up above just shining above it all, creating light on the very tips of this part of the cloud and I'm pretty much using the corner of this brush to blend it down I don't want to try and get my big blending brush and blend the living buggery out of it and turn it all into snot otherwise you'll be grievously disappointed and you'll be thinking nah this aunt ain't for me it is for you you just got to know what to do I always call this a yumminess because it makes the clouds just look that little bit more yummy I'm picking up some more of that color just See how light I'm touching it? Bugger all. The sky is still very wet. And you can do that. Now just where it might hit the water, I might... The water's going to be about here, so I want some beautiful, strong forward clouds heading down into the horizon. Just pushing bits of stuff back. There's going to be a pocket of depth right there. Watch it just grow and happen. I'm just using my finger to flatten it down. I'm looking at me... I want to look in my um, viewfinder and just see how it's faring. And that is it. Our Cows have come home. We've done it. I might even put some kind of a vapour trail here, maybe. Let's just see. Just to break it up. Bit of cirrus vapour trail. That's very dry, that top, so I won't muck with it too much, otherwise I'll turn it to snot. Okay, there's our sky. We can dry that and then we can mask it up and start bringing the rest in. Just a quick tip how high to put your tape for the horizon. I've put it there, like you go up and down to your... I don't want it there, I want it about there, right? Somewhere about there. So you, you get it on there, okay? Grab yourself a marker, something you can just mark the side area with. So I'm just showing you this as a little hack. Put that line there. I was going to do it off camera, but I'd rather show you a whole lot. Then pull it off and then put your tape to those marks there, and then you know you've got the right height for your horizon light. Now the trick, so you do not get a white 
edge when you've done all your white and your painting. The trick not to get a white edge is when we put the white on, don't bring it all the way to that edge there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the deep water coming towards us, going into the shallow water, getting all the dirty sand under it to the sand color here. Now the best way to do this, get your colors ready before you start, but we're gonna put all those on and then break them up with the white. So I've got some more craft white to block in the canvas and I've got my turquoise, I've got some French ultramarine and I've got some dioxine purple and yellow ochre. Just grab some of the craft white now remember, like I said, don't bring it right up there to the tape. We'll start from here. And we'll get all this blocked on right to, we can go somewhere to about there, just where it's not touching the tape and block this in. Now I'm gonna stroke this left and right and get this nice and thin and even like I did to the sky. And then I'll just slowly come to the tape a little bit just to get rid of any lip there we go. Now I'm going to pick up my turquoise out of a tube. This is just phalo turquoise. So pretty much come along here, pushing this colour onto your canvas, bringing it down to nothing. I want it a little bit darker out there. I don't want it to, there we go, look at that. You stamp it on like so. And then you all know how to water fight, don't you? Well, that's a bit too dark, so I can keep rubbing it until it washes away a bit. There we go. Now I'm gonna bring this down to, I've got there, I've got one, two marks there. I'm gonna bring this down to this mark, at least. This is all me ocean. Now we've got to create depth with out there and out there as well, get some more there get it on and then push it through now this is quite simple and effective and the more you do this and study other works you can become really professional at your ocean seascapes now i'm grabbing my yellow ochre that's my sand going to be the sand i'll put a little bit of dioxine into that look at how much dioxine i put and i'm not even going to use it all and the white on the board is going to help get this to go lighter as well. So just simply come across here, push it on. See, I don't know if you can see that dioxine in there, but it makes a difference to your, to your palette. Now we've got it to the water. We can add more white onto that if we feel it's too heavy. Now what I'm going to do is simply get it under the water. So what I'll do, I'll just load up one side of this flat brush, or it doesn't matter, both sides. And I wanna now stamp it on and splice it into the water the color there, backwards and forwards, just stamping it on so as we can get it looking like it's going under the water. There we go, I'll wipe this up there and I'll water fire that. Okay, beautiful, I'm gonna need a bit more. So we'll get some here, uh, some here, there we go. And what, oh, this, where it's joining just here, I wanna get it a little bit, there we go. So I've brought some of the water into the yellow and some of the yellow ochre into the water there. Stamp it on, oh, watch this, stamp it on and then water fight. it. Now get it till you're happy with the amount. I'm happy with that. I don't want to go too crazy, otherwise I'll keep going and going and going. We've got that sand going underwater. When we put the white stuff on top, you will see how it's working. Now down here I've got my French ultramarine blue. This is going to make up the bits of depth and whatnot into that water. So we'll get this onto our brush. In a way, so you can stamp it on, because I want some bits out here. Like, watch this. Right out there like that. And I want it, I'm gonna come along here and I want a nice, big, thick, deep band of it here. So I'm stamping it on, I can control this. I'll turn my brush around. Keeping it level in cahoots with that horizon line. Now working out not to come too low. I want some of it here. Now that looks a bit weird, mumble jumble. 
effity affity, whatever you want to call that word. I want to waterfy that now, okay? So what I mean by that is just come across and waterfy it, keeping it straight though, and then go back the other way. Hey, you're gonna pull that tape off? Oh yeah, we'll get that off. So let's see, hopefully we don't have a white ridge there. See, that's okay. That's, that's a good horizon line out there. Just giving it a bit of a dry, but not too much. You want it a little bit rubbery. Now we'll put our whitewash on. Uh, find yourself an applicating brush, a putter on a brush, something to put it on, and then also at the same time something to scrumble it. I'll try my little scrumbling brush. Coming down to the palette, now you want a good, you don't want to use that craft paint because it's got no grunt in it. You want some good titanium white out of the tube, and if you want to know exactly what I'm using, it's just uh, titanium white, series one. I tell you, fine artist quality. Now what I'm gonna do is load this brush up, okay? Now the trick with this, don't get it too like that because it's gonna, you want these that way, okay? Watch what I do here. I'll get, this is where I want it to be hitting the sand. So let's say about here, fluffy. Now stop, I wanna grab this brush and push that into the sand. Now, don't dry your painting too much because you need this. See how that scrambled into that? You need it. If it's too dry, it'll be very difficult to get that to happen. Now, I want some of it coming down here. I'm just getting the very edge done first. something there. Now watch how I scrumble it. I, I might have put a U shape there, but I'm scrumbling it left and right. If you scrumble it up and down, that's going to make it look a bit like you're in a helicopter looking at the top of your water. And you'll just see how effective you can pull this off on your own, okay? Stamp it on. Where are we? I'm also going to grab my liner brush, because sometimes a liner can get, watch this, I can get it the way I want. Look. Twisting it. Boom, using my scrumbler. And tiptoeing it back through the top of the whitewash there, leaving the bottom half sharp. You don't wanna lose that sharpness. And I'm just pushing that back, but don't overdo it. If you make all this too white and glary, you're gonna lose the transparency of your water. I'm just going to come down off the painting there, maybe a bit there, just to break it up. Leaving the bottom and pushing the top, but pushing it left and right, not up and down. So I'm finding using a script liner is just a little bit more achievable to get more realism out of your foam. And just looking at that, I'm sure you will agree. Left and right into the water there. So there's going to be probably another band maybe here somewhere. I'm just going to locate it first. Something like that. I'm going to stop. Because I feel... And then same again. Pushing that into the water there. Because from here now, I want to create bits of, you know, all this kind of term. Oh, all this kind of turmoil. So I'm going to do a bit here, just see how I can blend that where it's not too weird looking. So what I'll do is I'll quickly bring this one watch this i'm coming a bit wider i'll stop about there getting my scrambler use whatever brush is going to scramble it for you 
but keep the scrumbling push marks left and right. Don't go up and down. There's a main band of this second one, as you can see, but I've sort of broken it up. And the way I blended the dirt color into the watercolor and then putting this white on top has allowed it to look like the sand is going under our water. So I'll do wider bits because I don't want it becoming too clogged up with white glare, if you know what I mean. Let me see that. I'm happy with that, I'm happy with that, that's fine. Now, I've, I had put a bit of water in this paint, but you don't want too much, otherwise you can snotulate it. There's another word we've just created, my goodness. But people can relate to the words and the lingo I use, because that's why I use, I'm not trying to be awkward or difficult or funny, it's just the way I am, and it's so easy to learn and understand that vibe. Okay, now the very front, we do want to kind of sharpen it. That's what I'm doing now, the, the main front part of that second whitewash. That's what I'm doing here, just like that. Some bits of it vibe right back into the body of it all. And then down here, let's get some more of this kind of lacing beautiful now see here look that's fine but see here right here i want to kind of just fade this into that shallowy this color here has still got the sand tossed within the water where the movement is so we're going to get some little bits before i do this i want to I'll use my um flat brush i want to get some of the french So I'll get that on my brush. Get... And some of this now is going to, because this has got the sky color reflecting on it. I probably need a little bit more French into that. So I've just wiggled a little bit more just to see, because that's still looking a bit white. Let's start tracing this back into the water. Now, I've, Feel free to stop where you are at yours. If you feel what I'm doing now, you don't want to do to yours, you don't have to. Yeah, this is better. See what I'm doing here? I'm just going to grab some of it and try and well, I just want to see, because I looked in my finder there, so I'm just going to see if this is going to look like a bit of a swell in the water there, a bit of a wave. I'll just let me check it. Now back to the yellow oxide. Get a bit of water in it. Okay, and now some of the dioxine. And this is going to be sitting the whitewash where it's hitting the actual sand. So I'm going to grab my script liner. Now what I want to do is I can use my bullshit stick or my mouse stick. Let's see, I'll try my bullshit stick first. And you just want to lean and here just act like a real nervous little mongrel and just sit this down, break it up a bit. This bullshit stick is allowing me to have incredible, as you would say, bullshit precision. Leave gaps where there's gaps. Okay. And you want big shadows where there might be big shadows. I'm just gonna have a sticky beak in me monitor now, after I do this bit here. Wiggle it, some bits can be fatter than others and some bits can be more thinner than others. And let's have a look at that. And what I will do, I'm just going to see if this is going to help or hinder it. I'm just going to blur some of it away. 
Paint some of that back, maybe. I don't know. So what I'm doing is I'm backwards and forwards. This is more of the yellow ochre in it now, not as much as the bit with the dioxine in it. So I'll look later and just see if I need to add more dioxine, dioxine or stay with this colour. Just pushing some extra dioxine into that shadowed colour that I mixed. And you might want to put some stones on the beach, just dark stuff. Not all beaches are beautiful soft sand like we have here in Perth, Western Australia. Some of them have got stones and rocks in them. We do have beautiful beaches here in my city though. Cottesloe, Scarborough, Rottnest Island. Now this colour here, I've just put a bit more yellow oxide in it. Let's say there, I'm going to just, let's go here. I'm just going to sink them down with some shadows. Just because I want to. I'm just getting the pure white onto my script liner and I'm looking at this, I'm kind of just very small but there's a lot of blurriness there and I'm just highlighting it with some of this kind of just kneading it up, getting some top bits out here hit with light. There we go. Okay, got my Viridian Green and my Green Ochre. I want to come... Where are we? I want this nice and sharp. And I want to come, let's say, to about here. Off there, let's say. So I'll come nice and sharp and just stop there like that. Who are you? How brave are you? So the simplest way, I'm going to show you guys how to do a palm frong is you've got that all right and then uh, we're gonna bring it skinny then it comes a bit big push thick coming to a point like that. How's the end of these go? We'll get some of it that way as well. But I'm using this dark colour to allow the depth. I've given that a dry and I'm picking up the green oxide in my script liner. I want to come down the guts of this first with a bit of this paint. Just painting it on like so. Leaving the dark, I want this in the middle of that rib, but I don't want it a tight, focused, sharp line. I want it just kind of looking, if anything, a little bit natural. I'm kind of coming in the middle of them. I got it there and I'm struggling. <laughs> we have the tools and we sometimes don't always think to pick them up. Right in the centre where that branching off that main from, like that. But this is kind of just sitting back, or that viridian green, the first green we put on there, it's kind of sitting it back. So I'll grab some of the cadmium yellow over here. This is the man I want, and I want to start adding that 
green oxide into it just to get a beautiful yellow green vibe just coming down leaving the dark and the medium green there but getting some form of light hitting this some of these I want pasted with this yellow and then I want to get one side of them hitting with light like here there goes another plane here yeah mate every day we hear them This is in front rock, it's pushing that other from leaf back. And then we'll get that one. Stopping there. I want to kind of separate a lot of these with it. I'm just mumble jumbling it in there now. But I want it sharp in some places. I don't want it too iffity effity. Now I've just added the littlest extra yellow because some bits that's on the tape there. I want some of it really hit with light. Just very little of this one now. There, I want maybe some leaves just burnt. You know, some of these leaves burn. I've noticed. Some of them can burn with the yellow too much. Now I'm just going to sign this and then we'll take the tape off and reveal it. And I want to use this opportunity to thank my patrons and YouTube channel members who support my content every month. If you want to become a YouTube channel member, hit the join tab. And if you want to become a patron as well, there's a Patreon link in, in the description box below. Hit that and become a patron and support my content. Because all this content I produce for you is free and it's great to get support every now and then. That's not too bad of a seascape, oceanscape there. It's got a bit of realistic realism in it. Got everything going on there. And I know you can do it. Well, I've got to say, I had a lot of fun doing that. And I hope you enjoyed the process. Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, look at this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck. Good on you.